Hello everyone, with me today is Jason Lavis. Hi. And you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. So, uh, Jason, thank you, first of all, for being on the show. Of course, absolutely. And uh, you are a regular here at the shop, as far as regular, but also smoking cigars. How long have you been exploring cigar smoking? Probably since probably 2006. Okay, wow. Oh, uh, yeah, my first experience was at work, working for Amtrak as a line cook. Okay, okay. And uh, my first real experience was one was handed to me at that time, and mm -hmm. we tried it, and... It's been cigar ever since. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. Okay, so today we actually are going to be testing our palates. Okay. And we are going to be smoking something that just came in, very special. As many know, we are part of the LCA, which is the Limited Cigar Association from Provada Cigar Club. They sent us a cigar called uh, Robot Fumidor. I've heard this is also like the Mr. Robot. To me, this looks like a... Uh, what, 5x52, perhaps, Robusto? So this is an interesting cigar. It has an interesting story behind it. There is a gentleman who, at this point, is has a secret identity. I don't even know the gentleman's name. Is a cigar uh, maker in the industry, and he wanted to see what the review would be like if his name was not associated. So he created this cigar. So I don't know what tobacco is using this. I don't know who created it or okay. the country of origin. But I think we'll go ahead and give it a try. Let's go. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and give it a cut and a light. Um, typically, when you're trying new cigars, that ones that you gravitate towards and such like that, um, what would you say your palate is? Mild, medium, full? Um, when I first started, I was very like mild. Okay. Mild. Okay. But you know, over the years and you know, knowing you, you've introduced me to a lot of uh, more medium to almost yeah. full. Okay. So I'm kind of yeah. going full is my next step. Definitely. So Awesome. So yeah. I'm not sure where the strength level is. Okay. But we'll go ahead and test out. Let's go. Maybe try for a dry draw. Seems wide open to me. How's yours? It's good. It's um, a little hint of a, almost like a fruit note to it. Mm, definitely. Well, we're going to go ahead and light this up and it's going to see where we land. All right. Interesting. It's not bad from... No, that had a lot more flavor yes. like, than I was almost expecting. Right from the start. Yeah, a little bit of pepper on the retro. I don't know, to me, it, it's got like, almost like, I don't know if peanut butter is like the right like flavor note to it, but there's some kind of like... Peanut butter. Huh? Muted, almost like a muted sweetness. Now, now you, as you had mentioned, um, are <clears throat> a chef. Yes. And and have done a lot of that. So what? how does that translate? When you're smoking cigars and trying new flavors mm -hmm. to cooking, does any of that carry over or translate? Do you have a bigger repertoire to pull from because of... Whatever sounds... I'm one of those guys, whatever I'm cooking, I just kind of go for. Okay. From my cabinet at the time. And, but, you know, if you're cooking like, you know, a dark meat, like a steak or a... You know, I kind of go towards a more medium body cigar okay okay so and i know that we've talked about this oftentimes about like cooking techniques and such like that there's there's something i really really want to try i've heard of it is of actually smoking and having a steak side by side right don't i've never tried this before um but if you were to say you know what if you're gonna go out and get a nice cut of steak or something like that mm -hmm. but it's easy enough where people can learn how to cook it right what what cut would you normally recommend well for me right off the gate i would go with uh, a ribeye to me ribeye you get the full you get a nice slab you get it's marbled really nicely with like a little bit of fat little, you know a lot of meat so you have it marbled you know it's going to cook well all the way through right just that flavor is just going to like pop right, right so i would say a ribeye is like my go-to What's your process? Do you normally marinate it? Do you give it a rub or simpler the better? I let it rest for like about a half an hour. Mm -hmm. You get the room temperature. Okay. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, done. Awesome. And then when you when it comes to the point where you know you're throwing it on the grill, you're mm -hmm. ready to cook it. How how long each side? Do you flip it multiple times or depending on the thickness? I try to do at least six to seven minutes on each side. Okay. Because I'm a I'm a more medium to rare medium rare. Okay. Kind of steak guy. Yeah. You mean you don't want to like charboiled black? Or... 
<laughs> I want it. Yeah, no, I don't want a hooky puck or anything, you know. <laughs> so, for me, and I could be completely off. I'm not sure. The, to me, this tastes like Nicaraguan. The richness and the uh, strength on the retro that I get. The saltiness of it almost reminds me of a Habano, but then also like the underlying sweetness of it also kind of like makes me lean towards Corojo tobacco. Right, right. I know so, the Habano definitely. I don't know. What are your thoughts so far? Like uh, as far as I know we're only the first third in, but mm -hmm. when you smoke it first impressions, what would you say its strength level is at? For me right. personally, mm -hmm. I, I definitely a medium. You know, I mean, it's right on the cusp of... It is. It's like edging towards yeah, that, but maybe not quite. Right on the yeah. cusp, big time, but... On that last puff, kind of trying to get like a more feel for the tobacco, I feel that pepper, I feel like this musty earth, a little bit of sweetness underneath, um, also so, sort of like a woodsy note to it, um, like a dark oaky woodsy note. Um, yes. But a lot of things happening on, which is like going to kill me now until I figure out who does the cigar. <laughs> but I'd be almost Some willing... Some big celebrity we don't know about. <laughs> <you know? laughs> I'd be almost willing to to bet that it, I'm pretty sure it's Nicaraguan. To me, it tastes like Nicaraguan tobacco. Doesn't have like the Honduras sweetness. Doesn't really have that like... Oh, no. No, not at all. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't say uh, predominantly sweet, but there's enough sweetness in it to give it complexity. Right. I feel like. And no, no sweetness in this one. Mm -hmm. What would you say are some of the brands that you really enjoy smoking that, that stick out to your mind? Like, hey, that was a really good cigar. I would like to revisit it. You know, I always like Southern Draw. Mm -hmm. Aganorsa was good. Okay, okay. Aganorsa is always good. American Viking, of course. Yeah. You know. Yeah. American Viking is always good. Like, I just ha had one was last night. Yeah. On your, on your, oh, on yeah. your, on your yeah. show. And to me, for me, this is actually, this LCA is really a treat because for my palate, typically when it's more medium plus the full, LCA tries to cover all the bases. You get some releases that are more mild, some more medium, some more full. I feel like this is a bit more accessible for everyone because of its strength level. Right, right, definitely. Um, but it, it definitely stands out. <laughs> this one's caught my attention. I'm interested to see how it goes to the next thirds. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the show with us. Thank you. And thank you for Appreciate smoking it. the cigar. Uh, I'm sure that as we continue to smoke it later on, we'll try to figure out who it is and <laughs> what we're dealing with. But um, thank you so much for taking the time and being on the thank show Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Oakland Tobacconist.